Hello, everybody. My name is Marky e. Jackson. I am a software engineer. This is the Jenkins Pipeline Authoring SIG meeting for the U.S. time zone. It is March 20th, 2020. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Liam, welcome back. Yay, I'm alive. I'm alive. Vastly different world, as we were yeah. chatting about earlier. Yeah. Uh, I will like to start, uh, before I start this meeting, I would like to say that the Jenkins, does, uh, Jenkins community does have a code of conduct, which essentially amounts to do not be a jerk, be good to one another. With that, uh, we will get this meeting underway. Uh, Liam is taking notes. I thank you for doing that. I am going to uh, say that if you have not added the, your name into the attendees list, which I believe everybody has, that's awesome. We will move into open items. The first open item is closing out the personas. I know there, the last, uh, before you had uh, went on vacation, Liam, the last item we talked about was adding in the questions for the various personas. I feel that most people have done that. There may just be one or two more that need to be added out. But what I would like to do is start to close that out uh, this week and have before next week have that be uh done uh, i did not realize my camera was not on yeah well uh so i'd like to get that closed out if we can mm -hmm. uh looks like someone was nice enough to <clears throat> ask to do some of the characteristics for yuri who i'd signed up for so that's thank you very much um I should add a few more on that, but anyway, so do, <clears throat> let's see here. Do we want to go over these to close them out or, I mean, how should we go about that? I think we've gone over, I'll, I'll leave it up to the, I'll leave that up to everybody. I think we've covered them enough. Okay. Uh, but I don't want to be the final say on that. I'll leave that to, to everybody. Um. Which plugins should I install? Okay, so let's see. Maybe take 10 minutes to just sort of taught, like walk through the questions that, that people would ask. Yeah. Okay. So Yuri, the utilitarian uh, ops person, they run the team's Jenkins server. Their questions would be, how do I install and upgrade Jenkins? How often should I upgrade Jenkins and plugins? Which plugins should I install? Um, I want to put um, just rant like what? How do I get this to work? Basically, how do I how do I do and ask Stack Overflow? <laughs> the... Yeah, another what good one may be is you know, uh, I have personally seen a lot of questions over the last thirty days, sixty days of people asking how do I get Jenkins to work in Kubernetes? How do I <laughs> how do I run the Kubernetes uh, plugin? <clears throat> What is the use case for the Kubernetes yeah. plugin? It's an actual, I'm working with somebody currently right now because they thought it was for something different. And before they asked their question, they spent a lot of time sort of trying to make it work for a use case that the plugin did not support. Yeah. A minute of advertisement. I'm looking for speakers about the Jenkins and Kubernetes. We plan to do a series of online meetups for that. Yeah, I will sign up for that, by the way, because I have some pretty <laughs> good stories to tell about Jenkins and Kubernetes. Yeah. Any other environment that works as well. So just let us know if you would like to participate. I almost feel like there could be a sub bullet of, of which plugin should I install, which is what do they do? Right, because in, in your case, if they would have known what your plugin was, then um, Right, they, they, they wouldn't have been confused. Agreed, I think that's a good question. Okay. No, not, not to negate the fact, your specific case is a, a good one because I think a lot of people are, would pro are, are probably looking into Kubernetes and you, you know how, how can it help with Jenkins? Yeah, I think one of the, I, I think use cases needs to be Doc, uh, on this particular plugin, for example, the use cases just needs to sort of be laid out in the beginning of the, the README, for, mm. for example, because it's not very clear. Hmm. 
Hmm. Um, d- does what plugin should I install? Is is there a related question? What plugin should I avoid installing? Ah. We have a list. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure this is all, all Yuri. I, that, that may be one of these other personas. Well, I mean, this is the kind of things that they'll ask more more commonly, like they're, because they're, I mean, other, it's, it's not a cut and dried thing, right? There's not like, oh, they, mm-hmm. they only ask these one questions. It's more like these are the kinds of things that they're going to be asking. Hello. Right. Um, most often, right, to start with. Um, so, anyways. Uh, da, da, da. All right, what else? So, moving on to Erica. Um, it's the person who's been dropped into doing uh, the Jenkins maintenance. Um, but it's trying to do it right um, and improve on things and make sure they understand things. Uh, where can I find documentation to help me keep Jenkins running? How do I debug failures in pipelines after upgrading? Uh, how can I create easy to manage pipelines? Is there a list of best practices uh, documents to guide me? This is similar to the uh, similar to the ones that Yuri asked, but a little little more on the uh, holistic kind uh, of try and understand that this uh, this new world I'm living in kind of thing. Um, where can I get a list of steps provided by plugins so I don't try to recreate them um, in Groovy when I should not. And when should I not trust steps from random plugins? Uh, just do this. Um, what is, I wonder what, it, what that means. Again, this so is a plugin do I, kind of thing. I, I think I, I added that and, and um, it, it comes out of something I, I've noticed is that a lot of people don't bother when, when, when they want to do something like send a Slack notification or make a, make, make a rest call to some random API. I've, I've got a whole list of things I've seen people do. They, they often don't go search to see if there's a plugin that exports that step. And then they, they write a bunch of um, like, like shared, like, 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 you know, tens, hundreds of lines of shared Groovy that, that to do the same thing. Um, and then, and then sometimes they, they, the person that wrote it leaves. <laughs> and so somebody like um, Erica would, or really would, would, might end up having to support someone else's junk. And, and then, so sort of the, um, the, the counter to that, when I was chatting with, with Marty, um, you, you know, sometimes they explicitly do that because plugins export steps that don't work well. Right. I think one, I don't know what persona, what I'm about to say would fall under. I feel like it's Erica and yep. maybe Olivia, but for <clears throat> example, I have had the passionate debate with individuals about the use of plugins versus natively writing the code. A good example is Docker. So most people will trust the underlying Jenkins to handle Docker, you know, certain native Docker calls as opposed to writing those native Docker calls out themselves. What happens is, is for in my particular example for my argument is durable task plugin. If that somehow gets broken, for example, 1.32 was broken for a bit, that broke all underlying Docker. And people had to write things out natively while we waited for a fix in 1.33. Uh, I'm wondering if the quote, I don't know if it's a question to say, when do you install a plugin versus actually writing your own, you know, code to do something such as Docker. Hmm. Is it, is it something, um, can I get a list of plug, plugins that are currently broken? Would, would that, would that be a question someone might ask? Um, well, the, the answer is they shouldn't be, especially core ones like that shouldn't be broken. That's the yeah. kind of thing that we, I mean, I would say that that cloud bees part of what they build their business on is having is that sort of the the uh, customer assurance program and stuff like that, where they mm-hmm. they're doing the testing to make sure that things stay stable. Mm-hmm. I mean, there um, there are some things though, like I would say Docker workflow, which like if you ask anyone who had any part in creating that plugin, they would say you should never use this plugin ever. At I all. know, I know exactly who you're talking about, especially but, that is yeah. totally that exact same thing. 
Yeah, but it's like it's not necessarily clear to a user who just wants to use Docker and they just search the plugins page for Docker. There's no way for them to realize that this plugin is absolutely considered something you should avoid at all costs. Yeah. So that kind of gets back to the previous question about which plugin should I, I not use? Yeah. Um, I mean, th this one sounds like it, you should never, ever use it. Not I, I was using it and, and it broke, so I had to work around it. Yeah, I mean, like the durable task regression was like we fixed that pretty quickly. It was just like mm -hmm. an accident, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It was fixed quickly, but that from a no. Because I don't want to say I, because I was able to know about that from a core perspective, I was able to mitigate it. But for those people that don't know that, and they're just like, uh, you know, they're not ops. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, I'm using, uh, you know, agent Docker file and it's just not working or, you know, or a doc image and it's not working. They may not know, have the, the, the advantage of knowing that there's regression taking place on that. And that's sort of where my question comes in, if that's a valid question. Oh, yeah, and it's valid. Just a question of like, what do we, <clears throat> what do we do about it? I mean, there's the, the problem of, the general problem of upgrading plugins, right? Um, yeah, I think the question that I have probably falls into the, mm -hmm. the upgrading of plugins. Like, when do you upgrade? How do you test to make sure that upgrade doesn't break things. So maybe that question I have has already been asked in Erica. Uh, um, is it? I don't see specifically about plugin about when uh, and how, when should I upgrade? God, can't type it this morning. Updates, upgrade, uh, plugins, and how do I make sure they don't break things? Cause regressions. I mean, this is the same question that actually I think Yuri would be asking as well, but the um, actually, Yuri, Yuri's question would do it. Do I have to upgrade, upgrade this plugin? <laughs> Cause he would just leave it alone. Fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> Keep dropping eyes. All right. Anything to add there? I mean, it's. Um, so y your question was your point was that that there's the the reason that people don't use plugins sometimes is because it cause they upgrading cause, causes regressions, right? That's yeah. correct. Yep. Sorry. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, but that's true. I mean, like, like you, you gain, this is this, the, the, the common problem. You gain stability by writing your own code because you don't, you don't take upgrades. On the other hand, the reason why those things break is because we're fixing things, right? Very often. Correct. So. Hmm. Anyone have any other, any suggestion on, on beyond, beyond this part, this phrasing it this way, if there's anything to. <clears throat> I mean, I guess that's part of this, wouldn't it? Uh, let's see. Is it blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, well, it, I mean, it, 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 it's part of that, but it, but it, it, it could be it may, maybe not, not provide steps. Maybe it's just something that, 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 that's broken. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Should I, okay, use existing steps. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of what, this This is kind of that, that's the question that you were talking about. It's the same thing as this, right? Or is it slightly different? That was the question I think I was talking about. Okay. All right, cool. Let's, I'll, I'll move on. So we have Olivia, outside IC developer. I'm not ops. Um, how can I tell what plugins provide which pipeline steps? This is similar to Erica, but different. I see that. Uh, how do I know when I should convert something into a shared library or not? Uh, I've read about declarative versus scripted. How do I know which one to use? What's all this about CPS, the sandbox? Do I need to worry about that stuff? Yeah, getting into the more, into the, into the, the guts of the system, I can see that. Um, I'm getting tired of granting access to various things in script approval um, to get my pipelines to work, but it feels like I'm doing something wrong by allowing everything. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I kind of feel like the first two are, are like better written versions of the ones that we had above. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that they're, I would say that these two personas come at the same question slightly differently though. Yeah. Right. Cause mm -hmm. from, from the, from Olivia's perspective, it's like, how do I write this code? They're, they're looking at it from a dev perspective as opposed to Erica, who's looking at it from more of an ops maintenance. Like I'm, I'm trying to get this thing running and understand this system, but they're not, they're coming at it from not a non-technical, but a, but less of a, engineering excellence, like I'm a, I'm a CS degree person, right? Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Eric is more the layperson view rather than uh, the, the CS degree view. That's not that those things are very, are completely d disparate, but like that's the, that's why, I mean, I think that that's why I think they apply in both cases. Um, and, you know, like, like we said, they don't, it isn't always a clear, you know, uh, delineation between the two things. Any other questions? Yeah, I mean, what, where, where I, I landed on the, what, on the, on that first question, uh, based upon direct experience that was recent and fresh in my mind, as far as uh, I was trying to make use of some shared libraries that one of our sister teams had started to use and I was using a fairly a, a different Jenkins instance with a different set of plugins installed on it and I could I could imagine it not being easy for someone to think oh I need to you know I need to go figure out what plugin is providing that particular step rather than it just looking like well, that didn't work. There's something wrong with my pipeline code. What do I have to go fix? Okay, I will overwrite the exist the, the questions here so that we're not so that we're using consistent questions if possible. Uh, okay. Anything to add? Am I, did I miss, Carl, did I miss your point completely or is it we're just agreeing more than anything else? Carl? Sorry, clicking mm -hmm. buttons. Uh, no, we're good. Okay, cool, all right, just making sure. All right, DevOps team member, David, ooh, put the questions in here. How do I start building a shared library? How can I get better GDSL support? Um, that one actually probably could also go in, in here. Um, what's the best workflow patterns for teams? Uh, what are the ways to best use shared code? What are some common best practices? What are common use cases I can follow? Are there common use cases I can follow? Is there a link to videos uh, from the Jenkins community? Is there documentation of basic usage of pipelines? So Sorry, I did my inline questions there. No, that's fine, that's and, fine. 
when I approach these questions, a lot of the way I approached them was somebody that is now either taking over Jenkins or they, they are go moving from a one platform, you know, to, to Jenkins. And these are things that I would, having been through that some questions I start to think of. Okay. Do we have other, other things that go in here? I mean, this is a lot of this sounds like overlap from Erica. I'm trying to think of what the, what additional, um, things would go in here. The workflow patterns for teams is unique. Um, shared code is similar, but slightly different. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts on this? I'm just doing this bit of... Maybe some questions about like, how can they set things up? Uh, like in a repeatable manner, something like for script approvals or something. Like if they stand up a new Jenkins instance, they want it exactly like they had on the last instance. Automate management of management and configuration of multiple Jenkins masters. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. I do also want to try to time box this. Yeah, we're just about, I'd say one minute off of the time box. So um, I think it was 9.08 when I said, let's take 10 minutes. So um, so moving on to, I'll come back and clean this up in just a second. Uh, moving on to Lisa. Uh, how can I make pipeline support in my plugin easier for users? Will symbols help? What documentation should I write? This sounds like Mark writing this. Um, where will I? Uh, where will that documentation be displayed? How do I write uh, Java unit tests for pipeline code in my plugin? Where are common security? Are there common security threats I should understand while writing my plugin? Where should I ask questions about developing pipeline support in my plugin? A lot of plug-in detail stuff here. Um, what techniques can I can help me manage pipeline dependencies? Uh, what integrated development environment aids can help me develop pipeline support in my plugin? Let's see here. Static analysis tools. Some of these should get pulled back up into the. So the rest were mine there. Like, okay. So I think Mark and I interpreted it differently. Mark, I think, interpreted it as like, I want to use pipeline as a developer in a different plugin and i interpreted lisa as i want to modify the core pipeline engine itself hmm. like workflows ps workflow job well that's both of those are valid valid points yeah. there right so, mm -hmm. so we have kind of different questions well no i mean like the, the thing is this the, i would say that this this is one of the more open-ended ones in terms of like how how far up that contributor chain you want to go and how deep into the in or how deep in the internals you want to get uh, of Jenkins right um, so my questions are I mean to summarize it it's about how do I maintain these plugins like the core pipeline engine absolutely okay I'm not going to go through all of them though so yeah. I think that's good for the time box uh, Marky did you want to continue I think we've got a good good list I need to pull some things back uh, maybe we can need to move things around a little bit, but I think we've covered a lot of the questions one way or the other. Um, yeah, I, I I'm going to be adding in another persona that I think is good, and I'll call it Brian. Okay. Brian is going to be the student intern. Didn't think about that one. Oleg brought that up, and I think that's a good point. Yeah, uh, that was an edge case scenario we were discussing previous to Mark in a separate chat. So how does how is Brian different from say um, I mean I guess I would I would put Brian somewhere in the like outside IC developer right like they're in terms of that I, I I could probably so how would you differentiate them from that so for me it's a level of experience uh, because uh, yeah student intern uh, they come with limited knowledge uh, of the industry. Uh, the definitely of uh, programming at level of pipeline DSL. 
Okay. And, uh, but still, they may get uh, cases like uh, here's your Jenkins, uh, please automate uh, the product. I wouldn't uh, say I agree with such approach, but yeah, I see that quite often. So uh, basically, it's just a persona for relatively low experienced uh, uh, Jenkins uh, user and uh, who is tasked to, to do some development and basically needs a kind of ramp up. Okay. Um, I don't feel that strongly about adding it as a persona. No, no. I mean, I see what you're saying. Like it's somewhere between... It's somewhere to, between Erica and Olivia is the thing. And I see what you're saying, that, that it's not quite either one of those because the, mm -hmm. th there's less industry experience um, and less Jenkins experience, but they're being asked to do things at the level that, uh, things that you might ask of uh, the Olivia persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fair. I mean, I, 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 don't know that, I don't know that we need it, but I have no strong opinion to say that we shouldn't. Right. Um, I also don't have strong opinion. Actually, it starts rather from a joke, <laughs> uh, which is, but uh, yeah. As as do so many things. Um, I will. I'll add. I'll add it in, yeah. and it okay. could just be something that we can. At least we have it, and. Well, I mean, like you like you said, it is a good um, good perspective to sort of keep in mind that we that we want to support that that particular. Yeah. So student, Experience. explorer, or whatever. Yeah. So somebody who just starts using uh, Jenkins uh, wants to get uh, something running quickly. So basically a, a high focus on uh, user experience, uh, on things working out of the box. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, limited time uh, to deep dive. Okay. Do, do we want to have a, a persona asking the question, should why should I continue using Jenkins versus something else? And I, I ask because it's something I'm I'm fighting with a lot. Yeah. Um, and I, I I think it's kind of stupid because I don't think engineers should be focusing on CI/CD. But since people are asking that question, I mean it's just, it's just a waste of time in my opinion to like switch stuff. But is that something that we might address through Persona? Um. Hmm. Or is that so, too? No, no. I mean, I don't, let me see. So uh, Yuri wouldn't ask that because he's too busy doing it. Erica wouldn't ask that because she's taking things as they are and working with them, right? It's probably the devs. Um, the uh, either the I, and I, I think the DevOps team member would might might ask that question, um, but they're but. At that point, they're very often they're like, "Hey, we're doing this thing. We've already got a big investment in this. Mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and continue." Like it's, uh, I think if there's someone who would ask that, it might be um, Olivia. Whether yeah. at, at, in terms of the engineering side of it, that it would be the Olivia persona that would ask that. Like, why, why can't I use? Why don't we use something else? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, especially like at some of the characteristics and questions that Olivia brings up. Uh, are indicative of frustration, and frustration right. makes people consider other tools. Yep, that, that's exactly right. Okay, let's. and doesn't make it easy to do what I want. Or, or it even could be, I'm, I'm familiar with something else and I'm, ah. you, you know, joined the shop. There's maybe two different things. Uh, why don't we use some other tool instead of Jenkins? Uh, I want to do this in terms of, yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. yeah. All right.
that's a good question to have that on there. Yeah. Um, and I think there, there's probably, I mean, like maybe, maybe this one too. Um, let's put it on David as well. Cause I think, I don't think Yuri or, or Erica would be asked that question. They're, they're too much just like get in the, in the middle of it. Um, but so there's those two. Okay. I think we're good on this for, I, I feel, I mean, like I said, if you want to add Brian, I'm, I'm totally like drop Brian right in there. That'd be fine. Um, as a, as a, as a point. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I think these are a good, these are a good start. If we want to add more later, we can. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. So the next item that I had uh, on the agenda was, let's see, I wanted to talk about, uh, we can we can move, we can set discuss drafting roadmap for the last one. I do think that the, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, I do think the pipeline is YAML for Google Summer of Code is a good discussion to have right now. Okay. And I, I'm going to let Oleg talk to this. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a good discussion to dive too much uh, because uh, uh, there is no students at uh, the call. Uh, what we did uh, over past week, we agreed that uh, we would use pipeline ordering seat meetings uh, to discuss uh, the project. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, but so far it didn't work well, uh, maybe because of timing, I'm not sure. Okay. So, so maybe we'll try another approach. Um, but uh, yeah, what I wanted to, to say that uh, there is a project idea which is uh, specifically related uh, um, uh, to pipeline authoring, uh, basically providing ability to write pipelines in a fully declarative way without uh, Groovy DSL. Okay. And right now this is proposal on the table. Uh, Marky, if you let me to share the screen. Oh, uh, 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 oh, yeah, I can let you share this. Yeah. There you go. I, yeah, I do not I have the proposal. That was me. So, yeah, if you want to. Pick, I don't have the a... proposal. I'll drop a link for the proposal. I have to go find it real quick. Oh, Oleg is uh, going to do it. Yeah, I, you have uh, everything on my hotkeys right now. Okay. For GSOC. So, here you can see that uh, there is a number of proposals which are actually related to pipeline. For example, uh, there are pipeline documentation, uh, generation improvements. And today we have spent a lot of time discussing Checks API and how Checks API steps could be also integrated into pipeline. So, all proposals we have got so far include integration with pipeline. Uh, but specifically, there is pipeline as a YAML thing. And pipeline is YAML thing is a, a continuation of the project we had in 2018. Uh, maybe you remember simple pull request job uh, plugin, uh, which basically offered a wrapper, which was a generating declarative pipeline from YAML syntax using uh, Jenkins configuration as code and other tools. Uh, but uh, that's what we had at that point. Um, and right now the proposal we have on the table after multiple discussions that have an experimental plugin, which would be doing basically the same, uh, supporting YAML definitions, uh, but uh, it could be the definition close to Jenkins X pipeline, so definition close to one of existing pipeline libraries, uh, because we have a bunch of pipeline libraries which support uh, YAML right now, like uh, let's say Poet uh, or MPID. Or a third proposal, which was discussed recently, is actually having um, uh, support of syntax, which will be closer to Tecton. Uh, so well, these options were discussed. Right now, we are waiting for proposals. But if somebody is interested, in, uh, there is uh, this project idea. There was also a new prototype started uh, uh, by a potential mentor for this project, Ayutung. So here you can find, uh, what is it? Uh, pipeline as YAML project. It's a new one, just started um, uh, several weeks ago, which basically uh, there is no documentation, but it uh, persists an approach uh, where YAML is being interpreted directly without conversion. So uh, might be something interesting for the special interest group, especially if you want uh, 
като като е News Help This Project and if we get some an application which is acceptable we will definitely try to make it uh, happening under the umbrella of pipeline alternacy. So <clears throat> the pipeline is YAML uh, idea is separate from declarative even. They're just going to do their own. Uh, it depends because okay. right now there is uh, there are multiple ways how it could be implemented, how JSOC works. Mm -hmm. We expect uh, um, uh, students to come up with their proposals based on project ideas and then with help uh, of mentors with inputs to implement them. So the final implementation would be really dependent on the applications we get. Okay. And uh, there were concerns about how it would map uh, into existing pipeline ecosystem. So we run this uh, proposal with explicit experimental uh, uh, disclaimer. So whatever happens, it would be initially a prototype and it, it wouldn't, uh, won't be promoted as a standard uh, YAML implementation, at least in the beginning, unless uh, there is strong consensus in the community about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everything is uh, under discussion now, but yeah, there is one contributor, I think, who actually uh, did some progress, yeah. uh, who is interested. Uh, there are students reaching out and asking, but yeah, right now the traffic isn't that high, but yeah, maybe we will have something this year. Okay. I've added the link to the, to the project in the, yes. in the doc. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And now uh, you also had personas in the CDF. Oh yeah, it's a separate thing uh, I put on the table because okay. uh, I don't know. Did anyone have questions? Sorry, I, I'm, I was moving on there. Did anyone have any questions on this? None for me. Um, I just need to actually. Uh, I guess I should get in on that uh, on the Gitter channel and uh, stay in oh. touch with that. Yeah, Gitter channel for this project uh, points uh, to pipeline authoring seek. So okay. as long as uh, you're you within pipeline authoring. Then, expect great. all students uh, to be there. Okay. And if something uh, happens in GSOC channels, uh, we generally forward people. Okay. Whether they send a message to new channels, it's a separate story, but yeah, sometimes it happens. Okay. Anything uh, from anyone else? Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, regarding uh, personas and CDF, in CDF, there is a special interest group about interoperability. And what they're doing uh, nowadays, uh, they are trying to define common terminology. They're trying to define uh, um, uh, personas uh, for CI-CD tools. And basically, it's, uh, it maps uh, personas for pipeline. Though, yeah, Jenkins personas uh, are different, but still there might be some opportunities for collaboration. Okay. Uh, do you have a link to that SIG that you could paste in? And just uh, a second. Uh, yeah, there is um, a GitHub repository for that. But right now, there is not that much content. Okay. Okay, I pasted it in the Zoom chat. <clears throat> Great, thank you. I will uh, add that to the links. Okay, so good. Um, so we should <clears throat> go look into that. Yeah, so once you have something finalized for Jenkins, maybe it makes sense to at least bring it up in the interoperability seek so to see whether there is some uh, overlap with other tools. Because I believe that Spinnaker has problems which are quite close to Jenkins. Uh, for Tecton, for Jenkins X, yes, the space is a bit different. Uh, but at the same time, it's something uh, where Jenkins might be looking at uh, in several years, who knows? So some collaboration uh, might make sense. Okay. Members, meetings, Thursdays, 1500 UTC. Okay. Let's see here. There is that. Okay. Um, let's probably start look, looking into that. Okay. Um, Marky? 
I think we're, Oleg, thanks Thanks. for bringing that up just to be clear. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, we should see about joining that. Yeah, so now it's just for information. Yeah, thank you. I wouldn't wouldn't have known to look, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Roadmap. Yep. I was, uh, Oleg put out a uh, sort of overall arching roadmap for the Jenkins project as a whole. Okay. And I, uh, I think it would be advantageous for every SIG, but for at least for the pipeline authoring SIG to start coming up with a roadmap that can roll up into that roadmap. Okay. Uh, I know I've talked to you about that, Liam, getting that, uh, starting to dictate what we want to get done. Uh, but I'd like to start to first get everybody from the community's buy-in on that and then start to get something drafted out about things that we want to work on so people have a good idea. I will say a lot of my urgency on the matter came from an interaction with another community member who was very frustrated about the lack of progress in just overall uh, stuff that was prior to Oleg releasing the roadmap, but mainly towards uh, just like, you know, the GDSL and things like that. And just, you know, things just don't seem to be moving. So I thought this would be great. Have the, a roadmap. Uh, Go ahead. I, let me just, now, this person is frustrated. Are they, are they doing anything? <laughs> I'm no, be, I'm just, yeah, no, I know it's a, it's a, it's a fair question. Totally so, fair question. Please uh, define persona, Marke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which persona is this? And, right. Uh, so uh, this does not fall in a persona. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it's I want everything to be fixed, and I don't want to have to contribute anything. Uh, I just want it to work. Well, that would, that's 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 closest to the Olivia one, really, because that's the person who's coming in from the outside, outside IC developer, right? Yeah. Tends to be right. They're like, look, I, I I'm I'm trying to do something else with this. This is uh, the, the less I need to think about this, the better, right? Yeah, so I just would like to start thinking about coming up with a roadmap that shows what we're going to try to achieve, you know, in a given period of time. And obviously we know we're all volunteers, but go ahead. Uh, I didn't say anything. No, no, I, no, I, I just, that, I, I think it would be good if we started to think about items we want to, to achieve. And I don't think we need to set, you know, artificial dates on them, the things that we're sort of prioritizing with the community needs to say, we're going to get this in, in, we're going to try to get this in, in a release cycle or however we think about it. But well, so the thing that I, uh, the one thing I would, I would want to clarify here is, is the, is you're saying we want to try and get this in. And I think part of the point of this SIG is to do, is to raise awareness so that we aren't the ones necessarily doing it. Um, this is very much like we're volunteers. We're, we're obviously we are contributing, and we're going to do something with it. But the, um, I, I want to be. I'll make sure that when we message this, it's hey, this is a project being worked on, and you can join. Right? Agree. I definitely. And, and we say to whoever is out there, because otherwise it becomes a it, 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 people will look at it much like what you're uh, this uh, yeah. community member that you're talking about will say. Well, when is it happening? Well, and. and I, I, you know, we all, we all have, aside from Jenkins, we probably have other, other projects w- w- that we also work on. It's like, when is this happening? Well, you tell me, when is it happening? Cause I, I'm doing what I can. <laughs> like if you want to join in. Agree. Uh, I, I, yeah. I'd like to add, I'd like to add that I, I 100%, 150% agree with you. I do think that we have to, as leaders of a given SIG have to set some, sort of work precedents and when as we set you know those precedents then we can say hey here's what we're working on and it, we'd love your help or if somebody's complaining about a specific or and i don't want to say complaining if somebody's voicing a concern about a specific issue then we could say hey that's actually on our roadmap it's a little bit further down but i'll tell you what the reason it's further down is because we don't have a lot of help but if you'd love to help we can pull that up and Oleg, you have a question? Not a question, not a comment. So the roadmap proposal uh, I put uh, um, in the developer mailing list. For the record, uh, my proposal documents the process 
it doesn't document uh, the roadmap contents. You would be reaching out uh, to six and uh, everyone else uh, to get the uh, content. What, uh, and, uh, did yeah. you just send that out? Is there a, a link that you I can? Yeah, I can uh, send you a link. It's in the developer mailing list. Uh, so, okay. Right now. Yeah, uh, so uh, the implementation is basically aligned with uh, what you were saying, Kim. So we don't do any kind of commitment. Uh, we specifically deploy roadmap uh, to raise visibility of uh, the projects, okay. uh, visibility for contributors, visibility for vendors, because it's also important. Uh, we want uh, vendors to be involved and to see where Jenkins is going. Um, and at the same uh, time, uh, yeah, we uh, will be facilitating the things uh, because we have a really positive experience, for example, in JCASC space and documentation space recently, uh, where community contributors could do a lot of things uh, right. with uh, help uh, of six like entities uh, which just do uh, some assistance uh, make things happen. In some uh, cases, uh, do sponsorship uh, site uh, for delivering changes. And uh, this approach can really work. Uh, later, we could also align uh, it with community bridge projects. So, mm -hmm. it's, so there is Google Summer of Code, but we also um, did a successful ex experiment for community bridge this year. We have Sladen on the call, by the way, who was working on uh, JCAST developer tools. Okay. Um, and oh, uh, hello. Uh, one, yeah. Once we resolve uh, topics with Jenkins funding, which is on my, on my plate as a board member, we will be able to sponsor more such projects. Okay. And uh, that's where roadmaps uh, could also help because it can help us to prioritize the projects to be worked on in this way. So we try to have. Uh, uh, top priority projects uh, in all areas, not only features, also infrastructure, community, governance, and other things, uh, just listed in a single place so we can navigate uh, and help others to discover things. Oh, right. And I forgot I'm not sharing anymore. Let me, yeah. it's like, oh, I've got that link, link up here. There it is. Okay. Yeah. So, so this yeah. is that, that message and sort of your ideas for how that might look. Okay. Yeah, it's just the beginning. So okay. if you're familiar with Blotion roadmap, I just uh, took it and adjusted uh, to my proposal in terms of process, etc. Right. Uh, but yeah, the final uh, look and feel may be different because it depends on the number of items and we are going up to something like 50 items, maybe more. And the current uh, listing won't be really good for that. But right. in principle, it would be like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I was thinking we could have our, we start to think about our stuff to roll up into mm -hmm. this at, as the, as our SIG. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, like this is, this is good. I don't, I think that, so we're coming down to time. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have things directly on my list in terms of what should go on the roadmap. Um, so it's not, not off the top of my head, right? So what I was going to do is I was going to start doing the draft and then you and I could sort of work together on that. I'll start the basic part of it and this will be open to the community. So everybody is, is welcome to, to jump in and do that. But okay. uh, I, I was going to say, let's get the first, you know, start iterating on it and then, that's where we'll start to see where items that we want to start working on can actually be, you know, we can start to prioritize those items as a SIG to say what we want to start working on. Sounds good. So I will take the initial draft response, uh, or excuse me, the, the I will create the initial draft and then I'll uh, get it out there so everybody can start iterating on it. I'll have that ready before next meeting. Okay. Yeah. If you create it once, once you create it and start typing in it, uh, uh, it gets easier for everyone else to jump, jump in. Right. So. Yep. yep. All right. Um, that was all for me. Okie dokie. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? 
for me one of concerns is European meeting because yeah, we tried running it uh, two times in uh, the time defined time frame, but uh, both times it didn't really work out. So are there more people in the European time zone who have expressed interest? Uh, well, uh, that's uh, the problem because uh, the answer is no right now. Okay. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it's 4 p.m., uh, so it's better than uh, 6 p.m. Uh, on Fridays, that's for sure. Well, now it's 5 p.m. until then, next <laughs> week. Uh, but uh, still, uh, it's uh, quite late, for example, in Asian and Pacific region. So for me, for example, uh, it would be more preferable to do it, uh, let's say, early in the uh, European time zone. So let's say quite late in the United States, uh, but uh, good for, uh, for Asian and Pacific region. Mm. Assuming that uh, there are people interested, uh, but yeah, it firstly starts from people. So should I get together another doodle? Because I think, and I have to just go back and double check, I think we put a doodle out there and that was I the think- time yeah, it was a time I selected, but uh, the votes, there were not so many of them. So my suggestion would be to just drop a message in the mailing list and ask, hey, if we do it in uh, approximately in uh, this uh, uh, time frame, uh, would there be somebody else interested? Uh, yeah, and it, the, the yeah. one that seems to be most, most uh, happy making for your Europe time frame is like midnight US, and midnight on the East Coast kind of time frames. So... Um, and I'm not, I'm not opposed. I'm just saying like, it, it, that's the, as opposed to being them being pretty mm-hmm. close together <clears throat> on two different days and we really it, having them be really a disparate time would be better. So yeah. you're thinking like something like maybe 9 PM Pacific time, uh, later than that, 10, 11, mm. Um, I'm not opposed to it that but for for... but you wouldn't run it that's fine (laughs) (laughs) thank you (laughs) yeah no this would be we would have to we would have to have something where we kind of trade off or so you know but like uh or just you know Oleg or we find someone else who's in that time zone that wants to run it um I might be able to run it well, uh, and uh, theoretically even all that lap uh, with United States is not necessary it's uh, well it would be nice to have in general uh, but yeah, if there is an opportunity to expand the community it would be great but uh, okay. right now i don't see obvious opportunity to do that well, well i'm also kind of a night owl so i mean like if it comes down to it i can do late uh late night you know check in hey i'll, I'll at least be present to to, to do things yeah. it's just it's it, it would be a, a concerted effort so, so what time do we, so what I, what I'm hesitant on doing is sending out another doodle because that creates, I, in my mind, it creates chaos and people think like, what can't they get this together? Uh, I, but I will also say that nobody has joined besides Oleg. So, but that might be a timing yeah. thing. Yeah. So at that right. point you're like, eh. so maybe yeah. if we just set the time and say it's 10 PM Pacific or 11 PM Pacific. Exactly. And just set it, and then, uh, and we just go from there. Yeah, See maybe who shows just, up. Uh, or just asking uh, whether somebody would be interested. Uh, set approximate uh, time zone. Uh, well, let's say a range of two hours, uh, and uh, ask if somebody is interested. Uh, please let us know. If nobody is interested, okay, we just uh, kill the new meeting until somebody is interested. Uh, and that's it. I'm op- my. I guess sending out an email asking that would be the same as sending out a doodle. Yeah, it's gonna. Oh, okay. and, I will, and I'm not opposed to it. I guess more what I'm worried about is the optics of sending out different mm-hmm. doodles, uh, and then people just are getting confused. I think because nobody has joined, you just set the time and wait for people to complain. I know that seems like maybe the wrong thing to say, but uh, one of the things I have found in, in, a, in another community that I'm in is when you put doodles out and people will complain once something has been set. And then when you go to look back at the doodle at the people that are complaining, they didn't even participate. 
Uh, it's just better to set the time. It, it's, the, it's the science of when you give someone a choice, they will be less happy with that choice. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open. So. Oh, look, it, this is, I, I, maybe you should decide and like you, you, you have a particular perspective on this. So, um, and I, I trust that perspective. So my point is maybe you pick a time and then we'll figure out how to make it work. Okay. So, but, well, yeah, I mean, I like, I, like you have, you have a, I, you've, you've expressed a specific, like, okay, there's a, there's a space that where this would work. I want to know what that is and let's, let's go with it. Right. Okay. There'll uh, be two like... things that I'll need to do on my end is one is uh, we'll need to adjust the SIG uh, landing page on jinkin.io, whatever the time is we choose. So that's corrected. And number two, uh, the zoom that I'm using is not the CDF zoom. And the reason that I'm not using that is because it's, there's just been too many problems with that. How I can, I have the ability, uh, I think I've got like 10 host keys that I can give out. So if we do move it to a different time, I can, and someone's going to host that, I can definitely make them a host so they're able to run the Zoom on there. And I, uh, however, Zoom is, uh, CDF Zoom is empty in, uh, let's say, EMEA time zone. Okay. So it's not a problem. There is no meeting collisions, no anything. Okay. Okay. So I'll just, either you or myself, whomever just needs to, they need to get a PR into whatever date or time yeah. we're going to do so that. So you can just uh, send all action items to me because I'm probably the most interested person. Starting from the next week, I won't be able to participate again. Though well, right now it's hard to predict when you can participate. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, you can just assume that everything is on me to implement. And okay. until that we can put a uh, European meetings on hold just to save everybody's time. Okay. Cool. Um, Oleg, I put this on your plate to, for actions items. Mm -hmm. Great. We are at the top of the hour, just a little bit past. Does anybody right. have anything that they'd like to add before we close out this meeting? Awesome, great. everybody have a great weekend. I will have the video up in a short amount of time. And Thanks. if nobody has anything else, have a great weekend. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Take care.